Hello everybody, this is Gregory with How I Lost Over 100 Pounds and I've kept it off for 30 plus years where there should be no hesitance in your weight loss and weight maintenance. Today we're going to talk about being weary of the poorly trained health coaches that are out there. Now before we begin, if you need help with weight loss, contact me through the Clarity of Film link found here in the episode notes. Also check out my website which has hundreds of articles and recipes that might be useful to you. My two books which you can find on Amazon. And lastly, if you appreciate my content, there's a link for PayPal. Oh, and by the way, I started a movie podcast called The Cinema Rag, which you can catch on Spotify or Apple. All right, so I've talked about this before. Who should you listen to regarding weight loss? Now, I think there's a certain element of truth. You can listen to a doctor. The doctor is going to give you the platitudes on, on what to do for weight loss. The, the average doctor visit in America and allopathic model is about nine minutes. And the average American, of course, is, is overweight, 70% obesity, 40%, 70% overweight, 40% obese. The average woman is 5'3 and 170 pounds, and the average man is not much better. And so when, when the doctors come in to talk to you, they most of the time you're overweight, especially if you're over the age of 30. And they'll be like, well, I'll just try to eat better. Then you look at the doctor, and the doctor's overweight too. You might have a dietitian. The dietitian's overweight. We talked about gym trainers. We have that episode on gym trainers. A lot of gym trainers are overweight. It boggles the mind that, that people spend their good money on a 45-year-old obese trainer. And I get it. Maybe because they're 60-year-old and more obese than the 45-year-old obese trainer. But it's like, what? But I get people are desperate and they want to lose weight and they think and they're we're always looking for the pop a pill instant solution. And you always have to be weary of the 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 snake salesman, so to speak, the the unctuous guy who promises you if you do this, you'll lose weight. That's not how it works for permanent weight loss. And today you just see a lot of amateur quote health coaches. They're out there. They're out there. There's tons of. Them. I'm not going to name like the, the institutes or the places that give these certifications. But it's not even these these programs where where you know, someone does a 10 hour program, pays a thousand dollars, and now they're a health coach. But I would say this about dietitians. I would say this about doctors. You know, doctors, they spend something like six weeks on clinical nutrition and two years on pharmacology. So it's not like they're even taught good clinical nutrition. In medical school, and most importantly, they're still kind of taught, and this this might have changed recently, the old the old model of fat bad, carbs good, the Ansel Keys model, like we talked about here. Eat a lot of industrial grade vegetable oils; those are good. Eat the six to eleven servings of grains, like in the old USDA pyramid, and cereal is one of those things you should be eating. So there's still a lot of old doctors who will tell you that, oh no, don't eat, don't eat nuts, don't use avocado oil. You got to use canola oil it's just this nonsense so you kind of have to be wary of that but look i'm at coffee shops quite a bit and i remember i was in a few coffee shops where i hear people who look i get it man people want to make a buck it's a side business it's a gig it could be their full business and it's all about doing the hustle and making the money and ostensibly you want to help people but i would just be very weary of people who tell you oh it's this herb Oh, you got to take this vitamin. Oh, you got to do this special diet. Because A, lots of times, if they were honest, they didn't do the it's the actual studies. They didn't. They maybe found them on PubMed. If these studies were on PubMed, more often than not, they're just they have confirmation bias for whatever it is. Let's say they're they're a vegetarian or they're a carnivore or they're supporting you know, ayahuasca or you know whatever it is. There's just so many things out there. And so like, well, this website who supports fill in the blank has this study, but you never investigate it. You don't know if it's true. And like you see on those commercials for Nutrisystem and other things on, on TV, it's like, well, I, I did this and I lost 50 pounds and blah, 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 blah. And then you see the fine print. Not typical, not typical results. And this person's a paid person. Da, 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 da. And so just, just be weary of people who are pushing you things. And you see this all the time. I mean, this is the nature of advertising making you think you need something that you don't need by tapping into some insecurity that you have. I love car commercials. You're totally fine with your car. You know, it's three years old. 
And then you see the car commercial, they're driving in the desert, they're driving on the Pacific Coast Highway with no traffic. It's like, how often, right? That's how they've always done commercials. You, you never see them stuck in 405 traffic in LA, right? Because that's not glamorous. And so it was like, oh, I want to get a new car. That's how advertising works. We're desperate, right? We have this hole in our heart, typically because we've turned away from God, but we had this hole and we just want to fill it with new stuff. And look, when you're, when you're overweight, you're desperate. And you'll believe what people tell you. So people tell you to take this herb, take this vitamin, do this, do that. You're going to believe them. I would say, A, look at them if they're in shape or not. B, it's one thing if you're 25 years old and in shape. It's another thing if you're 55 year old and you're in shape. So look at their personal experience. And like I mentioned on the episode, should you have a trainer? I would tell you the people you should listen to, and this is not my own confirmation bias, are the people who've actually done it. You know, it's... It's funny how like like you can get a trainer who's a 22 year old, all nine pack and all this, but they can't relate to you. You're overweight. You're probably overweight much of your life. You're an outcast because of your obesity, and then you have this trainer telling you, you need to do this, do that, do this, do that, do this. And you know I've seen trainers most of the time they're just checked out completely. Uh, they're not even paying attention to what you're doing. They really don't care about what you're doing. They just want to make sure you keep coming back. And I always say like look this 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 trainer can't relate to you. This health coach who is not rooted in science probably can't relate to you. They never went through your what, what you went through, your, your trauma, your bullying, your ostracism. Listen to people who have gone through the trenches and have done it. And look, for every study that says dark chocolate's good for you, there's going to be a study that says dark chocolate has too much lead and cadmium and kills you. You'll see a study that says coffee is good for you, then you'll see that coffee is bad for you. I have episodes here in my opinion on both of these, but you're always going to find studies coming up because remember, who is funding these studies? Well, that tells you a lot about the angle of the study. But I would just tell you, look, if you're paying for a service, whether it be a health coach, a trainer, a dietitian, or you're spending money on Weight Watchers, we have an episode on Weight Watchers, a humongous scam, just you know, go in with a little cynicism and understand that. The best people to talk to, just like with therapy for the addictions, if you have addictions or let's say you have PTSD because you were in the military, you're much more likely to listen to somebody else who went through PTSD in the military who got through it or a a recovering alcoholic who's been clean for 40 years than somebody who hasn't gone through it. So what I would tell you, and I'm not saying this because I've gone through the trenches, I'm telling you that when you're seeking help for your weight loss journey, Seek out people who've gone through the journey and have been successful because their insight is going to be much better than a 25-year-old dietitian who just got her master's who knows nothing about the struggle, knows nothing about day in, day out, how do you lose weight, and so forth. They'll tell you what the textbooks say, but they can't tell you what it's really like. And that's why you need to seek out the people who know what it's really like. Guys, post in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Hit the notification, subscribe, and share button. Until next time, take care. God bless and pray.